Just listen to what he has to say. Let's get back to this toxic hunger thing leads to overeating because real hunger, I just want to be clear, is found in your throat. In your mouth and throat. Here's where you feel hunger, not in your stomach or your head. You're a genius. Welcome back to the Longevity Deprocess channel. We will learn from Dr. Joel Foreman, a highly respected physician, acclaimed author, and leading authority in nutrition and dietary wellness. Dr. Foreman has spent his career deeply investigating the powerful connection between what we eat, our health, and the prevention of diseases. In today's video, Dr. Foreman will share his insights on the concept of true hunger. He'll also reveal his prescription for getting off the dieting roller coaster and how you can find genuine pleasure in nourishing your body through a nutritarian diet. Get ready to transform your relationship with food and discover the joy of eating for health. And it's sometimes associated with increased salivation. That's why I keep tripping on my words here. That was a joke. And it's associated with dramatic heightened taste sensation. In other words, it makes food taste better. You ever see a little kid, you give them food, they don't want to eat if they're not hungry, if they're not, unless you make them a food addict when they're young. But a healthy child eating natural foods will love to eat when they're hungry, but when they're not hungry, will rather play. Actually, I would rather play than eat. Well, I, you know, it's like if I'm coming home from work and a friend calls me up on the phone and says, you want to play tennis? Even if I'm hungry, I'll go play tennis first. Because those act exercises of playing will take the hunger away, but I'd rather, you know, rather, um, you know, do something like that that's fun and go back and eat later. It doesn't matter. But there's no, there's, it's, hunger is not so uncomfortable, real hunger. But it, the point is, it makes eating food much more pleasurable and much more tasty. Off to play tennis again? I'm playing tomato tennis. Oh, a quick favor. We'd greatly appreciate it if you can subscribe and like. This helps the YouTube algorithm recognize the value of our content and share it more widely. With True Hunger, Dr. Foreman will explain how you experience increased pleasure when you do eat. And you prefer to eat when you're hungry. You don't prefer to eat when you're not hungry. Because I can eat when I'm not hungry, but I'd much rather wait. You come and say, hey, Joel, I got this great, delicious soup I want you to try. It's like got roasted garlic and like, um, you know, it's got lentils and um, onion and, and cabbage and sweet and sour. I put some prunes. I put some vinegar. It's incredible. You got to taste it. And I'll go, well, I appreciate you giving it to me, but let me, I'd rather wait till I'm hungry. Can I save it for later and eat it? Because I'll really enjoy it much more. Because now I'm not hungry. I'm not going to enjoy it. I'm not going to appreciate it as much. The heightened pleasure of eating when you're really hungry. Dr. Foreman will now describe the two different types of fat on the body. When you eat when you're not hungry, and when you eat excessive calories, you grow fat on the body. But the fat grows in two places external to the abdominal wall, which is called subcutaneous fat, and internal to the abdominal wall and around the organs, which is called visceral fat. Which fat do you think is more deadly? The subcutaneous or the visceral? It's visceral. The visceral fat, that's right. You see, because when you lose weight, and you lose subcutaneous fat easier than visceral fat, but then you go on a vacation, you say, oh, what the hell, I'm on vacation, I ate healthy, you know, I'll eat and you pig out and you gain three or four pounds over that week, now you put back visceral fat. You lost the subcutaneous fat going into the vacation, and then when you have a vacation, you bend. When you put the weight back on quickly, you put on visceral fat. And that visceral fat includes the high cholesterol-laden plaque that could be, put you at a vulnerable risk of having a heart attack. Do you guys are aware that most heart attacks occur right after holidays and like around January 1st, around right after Christmas and New Year's, when most heart attacks, when the emergency rooms are flooded with people having heart attacks because people binged on their diet. And they go from one binge, you know, whether it's holidays, whether it's vacations, whether it's a Super Bowl party, whether it's, you know, some other, what, there's always some kind of event, but well, it's right, right, the right time to binge on these risky foods like, you know, like we're talking about. Fatty donuts and cookies and crackers and all kinds of things and snorting cocaine and drinking carcinogens. Be fat, fat, fat. Now, the doctor will describe the dangers of dieting. This slide is just to demonstrate the dangers of dieting. That these most popular diets where people yo-yo their weight, they lose weight, unsustained because they didn't flood the body with nutrients. They didn't focus on nutritional quality. They focused on some scheme to make them eat less calories, which couldn't be maintained. It's like telling you to breathe less air. Unless you, fed, unless you on a regular basis, keep the body well-nourished, you're not going to maintain that. 
Then you lost weight, but you gained it back again. And every time you regained weight, you shifted fat from subcutaneous stores to visceral store fat. And as you did so, you increased the saturation of that stored fat, which increased the cancer-promoting potential of that fat. You increased your risk of cancer. You increased your risk of having a heart attack. You increased your risk of having a stroke. Because you gained and lost weight. You don't want to diet to lose weight and go on one of these crazy fad diets. You want to improve your diet to lose weight. Dr. Foreman explains the difference between a diet and dieting. The word diet has different meanings. One meaning means like a healthy diet. Just means describes the way you eat. And the other meaning of diet means you, go on, you went on something particularly just to lose weight. You can't, so it's a, I'm against that type of diet, not I'm going against a healthy diet or a nutritarian diet. It's dieting I'm against. I want you to eat the same diet. I want, if you're overweight, I want you to eat the same diet I'm eating. I'm not doing it to lose weight. I'm doing it for my health. But you should be doing it for your health too, whether you're overweight or underweight. Whatever your weight is, you should be wanting to eat right for your long-term health and your, protect your future. And then if you're underweight, it'll help you gain weight. And if you're overweight, it'll help you lose weight. It'll make you gravitate towards the healthiest weight. Do you understand what I'm saying? Diet doesn't work. Dr. Foreman will show a study which shows how people's perception of hunger can change. So diets don't work. You have to seek volume and nutrients. You want to get rid of toxic hunger. Animal protein, sugar, and caffeine feed toxic hunger. And here's a study on about 760 people where we followed them for months and months and months, and we followed that 90% of those who ate, who followed a nutritarian diet, 90% or greater, had a changed perception of hunger. They didn't feel hunger was that intense. They didn't have to go eat. They didn't have to, was, they, wasn't, they, didn't, they lost their drive to want to overeat. They lost their cravings, and 90% of them, after about six months of eating healthy and getting the nutrient stores in the body high, developed the ability to be back in touch with true instinctual hunger, which is felt in the mouth and throat. So 5,500 out of the 700 lost, the, lost their drive to overeat, and over 90% had a changed perception of hunger on this study of 700 people. Now the reason all of them didn't get better, obviously, is because a lot of all of them were following the diet all the way, or long enough. It takes time. Now, the doctor will describe his food prescription for America. But so, my basic nutritarian prescription which means that I want you to do some basic things at a minimum. This is not what I want you to eat. This is the minimum what I want society to do. Number one, I want you to eat a big salad every day. Every day. How many of you eat at least one? I want you to put on the big sign in your refrigerator, take out your magic markers, make a big card as soon as you get home, and write on the card in your refrigerator that says the salad is the main dish. And at least once a day, have a giant salad as a main dish. How many of you would at least eat a big salad at least once a day? Oh, wow, most of you do. That's great. And you put on the salads. I make it a point, I'm always in the back of my mind, that I have my salad today. Yet. And if I didn't, I have to have it, you know. And you put on it things that have particular powerful anti-cancer effects. Like, you know, like a little cruciferous vegetables, like arugula or watercress, or red cabbage, or Chinese cabbage, or bok choy, or kale. A little bit raw cruciferous on that salad. Maybe some tomatoes and a delicious healthy dressing. Maybe with, maybe with, nut, with nuts and seeds instead of oil. As the fat component. Maybe a little raw onion on your salad. We'll talk about that healthy dressing thing in a minute, because it's important to have at least, at least one ounce of nuts and seeds a day, particularly those nuts and seeds that are high in those lignans and those omega-3s, like sesame seeds, hemp seeds, flax seeds, chia seeds, and walnuts. How many of you have either flax seeds, chia seeds, walnuts, or sesame seeds almost every day? One of those things almost every day. Wow, you guys are very educated. And at least, at least a half a cup of beans a day could be sprouted beans and lentils on your salad. It could be cooked beans into a soup. It could be a bean burger or a, a mushroom bean and walnut burger. It could be a, a stew, a chili, right? Beans are very powerful anti-cancer effects. In other words, that compound IP5, inositol pentakis phosphate in beans, doesn't allow tumors to grow. A study showed that men who ate beans just twice a week, just twice a week, had a 50% low risk of colon cancer. Imagine if they had beans every day. They have no more friends left. <laughs> but no cancer. Oh, I didn't have to raise my hand on that one. That was good. But you get used to it. All right. That's right. You get used to it. And, at and a large serving of greens every day, like broccoli or asparagus or artichokes. Mushrooms or onions, very powerful anti-cancer effects. 
And the mushrooms should be predominantly cooked, not raw, because mushrooms have a, a mild carcinogen called a garotene that is blown off with a minute to two minutes of cooking. I always keep some cooked mushrooms in my refrigerator so I can put them while they're cold, but they've been cooked already, on top of my salad or put them in a dish or something. And some fresh fruits, particularly berries of pomegranate that, have, that are so rich in those polyphenols that, that actually have anti-diabetic effects, even though they're sweet. And did you know that berries, like blueberries and strawberries, actually can lower the glucose absorption from other foods? In the same meal, not like beans in the second meal, but they still have lower the glucose absorption and have anti-diabetic effects. They're sweet, but they have anti-diabetic effects when you eat berries. Holy unrefillable prescriptions. Doctor will now ask us to imagine so minimally, can you imagine where our society would be if everybody in America followed this nutri nutritarian prescription? What if all of America did this? How would, what would that effect it have on our healthcare system and our healthcare crisis and our economic crisis, which who can afford to pay for all these sick people? Not gonna solve this problem in Washington, not gonna solve it by legislating who pays for healthcare. What we have to have is healthier populations. It doesn't require so much healthcare. It's the only way we're gonna solve it, get healthier people. I'll drink to that. The doctor suggests that the government should replace their ubiquitous food pyramid. So if I want to make a pyramid, and if the government was going to make a pyramid, I'd recommend they make a pyramid that puts vegetables at the bottom of their pyramid. Not they put bread and pasta at the bottom of their pyramid. Right? And I wouldn't put that at the bottom. Put the foods you want people to eat at the bottom of the pyramid. What do you want people to eat? More vegetables, right? Of different colors and shapes and sizes. And beans and fruits and seeds and nuts and whole grains. And then you put the things you want them to eat less of at the top. You don't put the things you want them to eat less of at the bottom. You put the things you want them to eat less of at the top. Now, I didn't have to make it into a pyramid. I could have made it into a pie. Because the government changed to a pie and a plate, and I changed to a plate. If they change to a plate, I'm going to change to a plate. <laughs> so I'm going to make vegetables the major portion, the largest portion of the plate. And then split the rest of the portion with beans and fruits and seeds and whole grains. And if people want to use animal products in their diet, they have to use the non-commercial animal products, the wild stuff that's not, that's not as toxic. But that should be held to a much smaller percent of calories. Like under 10%, preferably, like that study I told you earlier, under 7.5%. You know, there should be a very low level of animal products using as a, as a flavoring for the food, not the big portion on the plate. Thanks for watching Longevity Deprocessed. Hit like, share, and subscribe to stay updated on evidence-based longevity tips. Share your thoughts in the comments. Your journey matters. Remember, small daily habits create big changes. Until next time, keep deprocessing for a healthier, longer future. Let's make this journey together.